Hello, and welcome to the annual ASAP demonstration debate. We're so happy to have you join us here at ASAP After School Activities Partnerships. My name is Kenny Golson. I'm the debate coordinator for ASAP, and I'm joined with RJ. Hi, I'm RJ Tischler. I'm the debate manager for ASAP. Yes, thank you so much for tuning in today for our live stream demonstration debate. To everyone watching, we're, we hope that you are well and that your families are safe and healthy during this time. We'd like to thank our high school debaters from Central High School and Upward Bound for joining us today. Each year, the demonstration debate is an annual event to kick off Philadelphia's middle and high school debate season. If you are just starting your debate career, this demonstration will show you an example of what a debate round looks and feels like. ASAP debate events will be conducted online until at least January 2022. And we are so grateful to our league members and supporters for keeping our program alive and thriving. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to our students here for the demonstration debate to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Alexandra Bonney. I'm a debater at Central High School, um, and I'll be the first speaker in the demo debate. Hi, I'm Miller Gentry Sharp. I'm a debater at Central High School. I'll be the second speaker. Hi, I'm Zane Fall. I'll be the first speaker for Upward Bound, and we go to Upward Bound. Hi, I'm Christopher Sarpong, and I'm going to be the second speaker for Upward Bound. Again, thank you so much to our schools and high school debaters for joining us today. I'd like to take a small moment to thank all of our sponsors for supporting students like them in the ASAP debate programs, especially the Pew Charitable Trust, Horner Foundation, and the Lindback Foundation. I'd like to also thank Penn for Youth Debate and the School District of Philadelphia for partnering with us at ASAP for many years. Lastly, we want to thank PSTV for recording and broadcasting today's demonstration. Awesome. Thank you, Kenny. Um, so uh, before we get started, I just wanted to read a few announcements about the ASAP Debate League. Um, so our competitions are going to begin uh, in just a few weeks. Um, they are all going to be taking place online via Zoom and NSDA campus for the time being. Um, and we are going to start the high school league with a scrimmage on Wednesday, November 3rd. Um, and our middle school scrimmage will be Wednesday, November 10th. Uh, for those in our league already, make sure to check out our weekly e-newsletter uh, every morning, uh, every Monday morning, rather, uh, for updates uh, and especially registration information for those events. If you are watching this, if you are a student or a potential uh, club leader and you would like to start a debate team at your school or your site, please reach out. We would love for you to join the league. Um, you can email us at debate at phillyasap.org to get started. So now, I'm going to explain uh, how the demonstration debate works. What you're about to watch is a full round of public forum debate. That is the style of debate uh, that we typically conduct in our ASAP leagues. The debaters will introduce and explain each speech before performing it, and each team will have three minutes of what's called prep time. Uh, so you might see them between speeches uh, talking to each other to strategize, prepare notes before uh, getting up to, speech, uh, to speak again. Um, and uh, you can take note of that. As the audience, you should be taking notes during this round. Practice what's known as flowing. Um, that involves writing down the arguments you hear uh, and the rebuttals from each team. And normally in a debate round, there is at least one judge in the room. Today, you, the audience, are that judge. So after the round, you get to decide who won. And please feel free to share that with us. Uh, you can tell us who you think won uh, on social media. You can tag us at Philly ASAP. And most importantly, make sure while you're watching this, write down your questions and send them to your coach. That way, at your next club meeting, you can discuss your questions and things that you noticed, discuss them with your teammates, uh, and help your whole club uh, become better debaters. So now, I'm sure many of you are thinking, what are we even talking about today? Well, that brings us to the topic. Our topic is Space Force. For some background, the Space Force is a new branch of the American military uh, that was created in 2019 uh, during Donald Trump's presidency. 
The exact wording that will be debated today is called the resolution, and that resolution is resolved. On balance, the benefits of creating the United States Space Force outweigh the harms. So for the audience, it's totally okay if you don't completely follow what the debaters are saying. What's most important is that you pay attention to how they are saying it. How this debate round looks and sounds is what's really gonna teach you uh, about debate today. So with that, we can begin the demonstration debate. We already flipped the coin and it's been decided that pro, uh, central will be speaking for the pro side and going first, and upward bound will be on the con side speaking second. Kenny and myself will be keeping time. Um, and in between speeches, uh, we might uh, make some comments uh, on the round so far to help the audience. Um, as a reminder, debaters will introduce each speech before they perform it. And with that, we will let the debaters take it away. Everybody ready? All right. Good luck. Okay, hi everyone. Um, so this is the opening speech, and the opening speech basically just lays down your arguments for or against the resolution. Um, and since I'm the pro side, I'm going to be laying down my main arguments um, affirming the resolution, so basically in support of it. It is four minutes long, um, and it's entirely pre-written, so um, you do outside research, and you have a full speech prepared. Um, and then after I say my pro speech, my opponents will give their opening speech for the con. Um, yeah. Oh, let me just get a timer. Okay. So I will be starting now. Central affirms, on balance, the benefits of creating the United States Space Force outweigh the harms. Our sole contention is ensuring national security. Our first subpoint is the growing threat in space. According to the CSIS, the Center for Strategic and International Studies, one of the four main countries that pose the greatest risk in space for the United States is China. They have been rapidly developing and testing both anti-satellite, ASAP, ASAT weapons and cyber weapons against U.S. satellites. According to a comprehensive assessment from the CSIS, China has proven its kinetical physical, its kinetic physical counter space capability several times with a range of direct ascent ASAT systems and conventional mid-course missile interceptors that could be used as an ASAT. Some examples of China and their ASAT technologies are in 2007 when China had its first successful test of a kinetic physical ASAT ASAT weapon in July of 2014 when another suspected test was conducted and the testing of a DN-3 ASAT missile capable of reaching higher orbits in October of 2015, December of 2016, August of 2017, and February of 2018. China has also been increasing its usage of cyber attacks on U.S. satellites. According to the New York Times, not only are cyber attacks against satellites relatively inexpensive, but every aspect of American space power is controlled via these satellites connected to computers. A potential hacking could decimate America's space Space capabilities. And satellites are not just crucial to U.S. space capabilities, but are also responsible for almost all daily infrastructure in the United States, including communications, GPS, and other information networks. China first began to incorporate cyber attacks in 2005, and in 2008, hackers took control of U.S. satellite twice. Hackers had access to command the spacecraft, but purposely did not do so, in an attempt to keep their operations a secret. In fact, Lloyd J. Austin III, Biden's Secretary of Defense, called for new American strides in building space-based platforms. Space is already an arena of great power competition, he said, with China being the most significant threat going forward. The U.S. Space Force is needed in order to allow the U.S. to effectively keep up with and deter foreign threats space power. Our second subpoint is satellite protection. According to Irwin, one main focus of the Space Force is in strengthening the cybersecurity of satellites. The Space, Force, the Space Force Chief Technology and Innovation Officer, Kreider, has stated that they are investing in technologies to protect satellites and ground systems from these attacks, and that this endeavor is a top priority, with the force currently employing over 1,000 personnel specifically focused on cybersecurity. Some key satellites that the U.S. Space Force is currently protecting are the Defense Support Satellite program satellites, whose purpose is to detect missile and space launches and nuclear detonations. The Global Positioning System satellites, which are crucial for both civilian and military navigation and timekeeping. And the Meteorological satellites, important for secure global weather and space data. 
our, thir our third subpoint is increased efficiency. The creation of the Space Force will gather resources and funding that already exists, but that was not able to be effectively used due to it not being under one central U.S. military branch. According to Sarah De Harrison at the CSIS, authority and responsibility for space was fragmented. A 2016 government accountability study found that there are over 60 different that there were over 60 different organizations strewn across the Department of Defense and the intelligence computer. Sorry, and the intelligence community with responsibility for space acquisitions. Key components of space architecture, such as terminals, ground control systems, and satellites, were in the Army and Navy, while more than 80% of the funding was in the Air Force. Additionally, real authority in the Pentagon is budget authority. When the budget for national security, national space security is fragmented across so many different organizations, it means that no one has the ability to make enterprise-wide decisions and trade-offs. As a result, this lack of centralized leadership leads to slow decision making, disunity of effort in building new space capabilities, and a lack of accountability when space programs went over budget or fell far behind. In gathering all of these strewn resources to one specific branch, the creation of the Space Force solves these issues and it allows the United States to ensure national security, and that judge is why I urge a pro ballot. Thank you. I will be reading the constructive for the second team. Um, in your constructive, like uh, the previous speaker just said, you're just laying out your entire case and they can vary from three to one, one to three contentions. And let me set my timer. Three, two, one. Good afternoon, Judge. Today, my partner, Christopher Sarpong, and I stand before you to negate the resolve. In order for our opponents to win, they need to prove a clear need for space force that our current system does not cover for. Contention one, the space force is not needed. Our claim is that this space force is entirely unnecessary and premature. It offers nothing new that was not being handled previously. Before we get into the redundancy of this program, allow me to explain its uselessness. To give you a clear context for what the Space Force's goal is, we bring you an article written by Forbes. Essentially, the Space Force intends to create a centralized hub for all space-related military and develop a focused strategy. But these issues were already being addressed. According to Frank Rose, some space-related issues include the continual growth of orbital debris, which represents an ever-increasing threat to both human and robotic spaceflight, two, the emergence of mega constellations of satellites, three, the, con the continued deployment of anti-satellite weapons and by potential adversaries, all of which have been worked on prior to Space Force using a system that the Space Force was not a part of. According to the CADO, the Already, the Air Force, which oversees an estimated 90% of the military space operations, regularly conducts space war games, including one in which troops simulate how to, how to attribute potential attacks on U.S. satellites. One that took place last year was set in 2017 and included international partners from Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom. It has, already, it has taken over a set of missions associated with the direct progenitor the Air Force Space Command. Though some measures may evaluate the performance of an organization on the granular level, other improvements of effectiveness will only manifest in the performance of other organizations, not, not the Air Force itself. Our impact, military effectiveness, since the creation of the Space Force is new, it needs support from other military branches. According to Lauren Thompson, the relationships supporting these functions have been laboriously worked out for over many years. Creating a new military surface will, inevit will inevitably impede and confuse the arrangements that have generally worked well today. Our entire military branch systems are built delicately, and, I have, and adding another branch will not only disrupt that system, but also halt all operations within the organization. If the U.S. proceeds to disintegrate its military aerospace military aerospace community, it will undermine the current dominance of both its air and in orbit. The air, its air force would be diminished by the loss of skills and capabilities directly related to winning the non-space related wars. Not many, not only will the space force disrupt our military effectiveness, not only will the military, not only will the space force disrupt our military effectiveness, we will also see a decline in experienced in experience personnel in comparison to our 
In comparison to our previous aerospace unit, according to Robert Farley in 2020, the Air Force has hundreds of thousands of personnel set with several years of battle experience and a coherent body of doctrine and a robust organized organizational culture. The Space Force wasn't created with any of these things. In fact, according to Mac Patricia McCarthy, the newly assigned Deputy Chief of Space Operations, the pers this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for civilians to join our new military service and participate in growing nation's space capabilities. Setting aside the jeopardy of our military systems and employing civilians with little to no military experience, experience, we would also be setting back America's aerospace community, far behind from our adversaries. In 2017, Russia actually combined their, their space force, which manages their satellites and associate with trafficking, tracking and control networks with their air force and aerospace and middle, missile defense force to create what they now call their, Russia, their Russian aerospace unit. We stand before you, we stand before you to ask you today, is judge is creating a new division of the military worth all of this? We negate the resolve. So now we'll move on to the crossfire. The crossfire is when the first two people who spoke asked questions about each other's cases, and we can clear up any confusion during this time. Since you went first, did you want the first question? Um, sure. Um, also, this crossfire is four minutes long. Uh, sorry, three minutes long, just like the uh, other crossfires that will come later on. Okay, so time starts now. So in your, in your speech, you said how um, the creation of the Space Force will um, increase ineffectiveness for um, satellite protection? Do you have any? Not satellite projection, I wanna clear that up. I said that the, the, the disintegration of the aerospace, the, the, US, the US aerospace community would inevitably impede on other military services seeing as we're creating another organization that isn't needed. Okay, but if the organization is specifically focused on space, and as I said in my third, in my third sub point, um, the funding that went to space programs goes to the Space Force. There's no additional military funding that goes to Space Force. So how does that impede on other operations? Because the Space Force wouldn't be functioning solely on its own. Just like every other branch of our military, we, they all work together. Even though they do have separate subjects that they solely focus on, they do require help from others. Does that answer your question? All right, yes. Do you have um, a question? My next question for you is can you elaborate on how the Space Force, what the Space Force has done to improve our cybersecurity or our, just, just our, the protection and the security of our nation? So as I said, the Space Force has specifically taken a lot of resources that already exist and made them more efficient in protecting satellites. And um, I gave some examples in my, in my um, first speech of, like, of specific satellites being protected. And um, as I said, there's been an increase in cyber attacks against U.S. satellites. So the Space Force is trying to protect these and strengthen their cybersecurity. Is trying to or has been? Well, the Space Force is only roughly like uh, two years old now, so there's no pure data to prove that it has. Okay. Um, but when compared to other cyber attacks, there's, there has been none reported in, this two, in these two years. Um, I had one more question for you. You mentioned China in your first set point, I believe, yes. correct? Um, were you aware that China also has an integrated aerospace, uh, aerospace organization? And don't you think disintegrating America's uh, aerospace unit would set us behind? Well, Not don't you think, but wouldn't our, I have evidence that our, not only our adversaries have not, not only have our adversaries, um, what's it called, have a aerospace unit, but also this, air, this space, the solely space unit that we're creating will also impede on all of our military operations. Well, for our, our adversaries, they, are, they have offensive space operations that are directly attacking U.S. satellites. Well, the U.S. Space Force is created to be a defensive organization, so I don't think comparing it to other countries which are inherently a um, making offensive operations would work in this case. That's um, time. That's yeah.
All right, so next we're gonna be going into rebuttals, but before we do that, I'm gonna use about 30 seconds of prep time. Um, thro so throughout the debate, both teams are given three minutes of prep time, which is time that they can use to converse with their teammates and prepare resources for their next speech. All right, I'm all set. What's that? Uh, it was at 33 seconds when I stopped. All right, so now I'll be delivering the rebuttal speech. Uh, the rebuttal is the second speech of the debate delivered by the second speaker. Um, in the rebuttal, I will be attempting to refute each contention brought by my opponents. If I have any time, I will go back and defend some of my partner's points. And I will be starting now. Uh, Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Miller Dedry Sharp. Once again, I am affirming the resolve of the benefits of creating the United States Space Force outweigh the harm. Um, so in the first contention, the Khan said that Space Force was not needed. Um, I think I dis uh, we dispute this based on our third contention, which uh, states plainly that the Space Force is increasing efficiency in US space operations because while previously these operations were performed by the Air Force Space Command, which the Con, which the Khan stated, the Space Force is consolidating these operations under one branch of the military. Um, now, the uh, Khan argued that Air Force already covers all of the functions of the Space Force, and this is, uh, this is true in a sense. The um, main functions of the Space Force were covered by the Air Force Space Command. As we stated in our third contention, the Air Force Space Command is being moved to the Space Force. So it is not as simple as the Space Force is simply performing operations that are already being performed. Um, the operation, the team, do, the people doing these operations will still be doing them, but they will be doing them with an independent, uh, independent budget and resources specific for space operations, which is why the Space Force is needed to increase the effectiveness of, of these operations. In their second contention, they argued that the Space Force would undermine our current military operation. Um, they claimed that, uh, they claimed, they gave a quote saying it was, um, saying that the Space Force would be recruiting untrained civilians or um, people with limited experience. Uh, however, the quote they provided does not say that the Space Force would simply be recruiting people off the street. And Air Force data has actually shown that um, at least 2,500 Air Force personnel are moving to the Space Force. So once again, the Space Force isn't, um, is not just um, doing this with, completely off from scratch. They are using previous infrastructure that the US military has and making it more effective. Um, furthermore, the, uh, they claim that the creation of the Space Force will undermine other military operations by moving them to a separate branch, but the US military has always functioned with many branches. So by, by creating a sixth branch, we are simply, once again, giving resources specific to the mission of Space Force rather than having them come through a parent organization. Um, they, also, they also mention uh, in their first contention that the space, the, one of the functions of US space operations is cleaning up space junk. Um, Irwin 2020 states that the United States Space Command was getting better at cleaning up space junk. Um, this was as Space Force was getting created. Marcon 2020 states that Space Force is continuing to find more effective and more efficient ways to clean up space junk. So once again, Space Force is doing what we have already been, done, been doing, but it is doing it more efficiently and more effectively. Um, I'd like to go and frontline 
our first subpoint a little. Um, I'd like to go through some of the other major players in, uh, in the space field right now. Um, one, uh, so North Korea, uh, the space launch and ballistic missile technology demonstrated by North Korea could serve as the basis for a kinetic anti-satellite capability, but many technological hurdles remain. An effective direct ascent or co-orbital anti-satellite weapon would require onboard sensors, optical infrared radar, et cetera, and a guidance simple system to steal, steer the warhead into a target satellite. Into a target satellite. It is conceivable that North Korea could field a crude direct ascent ASAT capability in the near term by adopting a ballistic missile to launch an unguided, unguided warhead to detonate in the vicinity of a target satellite. Such a weapon would be unlikely to directly strike a satellite, but it could create a debris field that complicates further operations for the target satellite and any other satellites in similar, similar orbit. That's my time. Hello, once again, I am Christopher Sarpong. I am going as second speaker for the Upward Bound team, and the main point of my speech is to negate everything my opponent says to agree with my side of the resolve, which is that the Space Force is useless according to our first contention. This speech will be four minutes, and just a little frontlining before I begin. First, I will go over my section, my critiques on their argument, and then I'll go over their points on our argument and how they don't stand out, starting now, good afternoon, judges. First, I would like to talk about their first contention, which is tactical. It, their first subpoint, which talks about a growing risk in space. And firstly, I would like to point out the biggest flaw in this argument is that all of their evidence and their danger theories and all of their fallacies about false dichotomy that they put in this argument is based on cybersecurity, which is separate from space security. The Space Force maintains and upholds our satellites, and also they are not a tactical unit, meaning that they don't have the power to attack anybody. They don't have any of the resources to go to war with anybody. So them saying things like China is dangerous and they have all these cyber attack anti-missiles, this is not something that will be addressed by the Space Force. And these satellites that they were talking about being destroyed, these are all issues that relate to the NSA, which talks about cybersecurity and things like that, not the Space Force. And they also bring in this 2007 successful test from China, but this does not necessarily mean that China is a growing threat to the U.S. The U.S. itself has anti-satellite missiles and things like that created under, before the Space Force was created. Now, they also talk about cyber attacks, which I already disbanded as something that's not related to the Air Force, and they talk about space arena. Their whole contention is about this militarization to space, which actually harms foreign relationships. Their second portion about protecting satellites. They say that we must protect from missiles and satellites for space, but then they provide no feasible evidence that other countries are directly attacking the U.S. Throughout, the whole, throughout their whole case, they talk about how it's so dangerous for other countries and how other countries are constantly beginning threats, but they never bring up a direct cause when an attack has happened to an American satellite or when another country has harmed an American satellite, meaning that this whole contention is just trying to put fear onto the Space Force, which once again is not a tactical unit. Now, to their last subpoint, it's about effectiveness. They say um, the Space Force will create a better controlled space, but it's not effective because, once again, the Space Force has come out of nowhere. And these delicate balances that me and my partner were talking about between the other military branches are going to be impeded because any projects worked on by the Air Force relating to space now has to be transferred over to a whole new branch which leads to a whole bunch of leeway and confusion between these important things that are happening in space. Now, next they talk about 80%. They also say taking resources to protect, but they don't talk about what resources are protecting. 
our next point is that they say that the Space Force will open up better communication between the branches. But once again, it will not because the Space Force has come out of nowhere and it interrupts its delicate balance. Now to respond to their case, which is they said that the Space Force is increasing operations, but they've given no proof of operations. They've just read a quote that says, under the Space Force, this is happening. And they've given a convenient excuse that says that because of how young the Space Force is, they're doing great things. But what great things are they doing? We have no idea because they've given no feasible evidence. The next point, they said, they said that 2,500 qualified employees are being put into the Space Force. But I, this is not a big number at all. This is 2,500 people are being moved from the Space Force. Not only is this taking away valuable members from the Space Force, but it's also taking away qualified people and only putting 2,500 in the Space Force, which is a very small number for a space branch that is supposed to be helping all of America with millions of people. Next, they say that it will not undermine security because this sixth branch opens up new possibilities when it doesn't because the Space Force, the Air Force was already clearly handling this. And it is because of that we've urged you to affirm, um, negate. I'm ready for crossfire. Since you went first last time, do you mind if? I, I'd actually like 15 seconds. Okay. That was 16 seconds. Um. Since you had the first question, do you mind if I have the first question? Let, since your team had the first question last time, do you mind if I have the first question? Well, actually, um, we spoke first, so could I? Okay, no problem. Yeah, um, I'll start the time when you speak. All right. Uh, uh, so um, my, um, my question would be, you say that um, Space Force, uh, you say that um, cyber, we can't use cyber attacks as evidence like for the effect or as uh, evidence in a debate about Space Force. No, um, I said that you can't use the cybersecurity of satellites which relate to a completely different branch of national security as proof that the Space Force is working. Um, when we, uh, well, we um, actually, we, you said in your speech uh, the main like issue, one of the main issues of, in space is satellite protection. We had evidence that uh, satellite, uh, we have evidence that like the Space Force is Protect is um, in charge of cybersecurity in regards to U.S. satellites. Why is that? Not, why is that not relevant? We said that the Space Force is studying the continued orbital debris. We never said anything about protecting cybersecurity, and we also said that the. We also said that the emergence of mega constellations of satellites, meaning that a whole bunch of satellites in one area, and account taking an account of crashing and debris. Disruption, you not the cybersecurity of satellites. Well, um, first, firstly, you did say satellite protection was part of, was an issue covered by not in the space cyber command. aspect. Um, well, cyber cybersecurity of satellites is part of satellite protection. One, two, we can provide sources that say the space force is handling cybersecurity. That is fully within their chain. Like their okay, duty. but. What I'm not understanding is you're saying that they're protect protecting the cyber aspect of satellites, but we have right here that the Space Force is continuing the deployment of anti-satellite weapons from potential avatars, which means to us that other countries, like you mentioned, are putting in like dangerous satellites, not the cyber aspect, but protecting the physical form. Well, um, the Space Force can both, be, um, both handle anti-satellite weapons and cybersecurity. Okay, so it's, you're agreeing on our point that there is a whole bunch of confusion between the branches because now they're not only handling space relations, but they barely have improved that, but they're also handling cybersecurity. How could that possibly work I out? I don't think there's any confusion there. Attacks, um, cyber attacks that would threaten U.S. satellites are the responsibility of the military organization in charge of U.S. satellites. Uh, Which would you is like the to ask NSA. So are you saying that the, the Space Force is also doing the NSA's job? 
the NSA is it, A, could you have a source that the NSA is protecting U.S. satellites? B, the NSA is not a branch of the U.S. military. But it is a branch of national security, which also stands to affirm my point that the Space Force is causing confusion between the branches because not only are you saying that they're protecting um, cybersecurity, which is more than just protecting the, malfunc the functioning science of a satellite, but it's also protecting things like internet security and things like that. So you're saying that the Space Force is in charge of these things. No, I'm saying the Space Force is in charge of it in regards to U.S. satellites. I'm saying they're protecting U.S. satellites. I'm not saying that they are protecting um, anything else. Okay. Um, I'd like to run some prep time. Okay, that was a minute and 25 seconds. So. Okay, so this is the summary speech. It is three minutes, and basically um, you can take uh, different approaches to the speech, but it's, uh, you can summarize what happened in the debate, you can start um, you can continue what happened in the rebuttal, um, but basically its main function is to summarize what happened in the debate to the judges. Um, and it is three minutes long, so I will get started now. Um, again, Central affirms the, um, on balance, the benefits of creating the United States Space Force outweigh the harms. I'd like to touch on my opponent's rebuttal. Um, so their, their rebuttal to my first sub point about um, the growing threat in space, and to my second sub point about satellite protection, is their argument that cyber attacks are not um, under the Space Force, that satellite protection should not be under the Space Force. But again, um, uh, I gave specific data from the Space Force website naming specific satellites that the Space Force is currently protecting. Um, satellites, again, that are very crucial to United States defense and to civilian life, like the GPS, the GPS and meteorological satellites. Um, so this completely disproves my opponent's arguments because I have, I've cited direct data from the Space Force that they cover satellites. They've also argued that um, cybersecurity isn't really an issue because no attacks have happened. But again, I gave a 2008 Chinese um, Cyber attack, cyber attack against a U.S. satellite. So this argument falls. Um, they also argue that um, because other other countries are testing ASAT technology, kinetic physical ASAT technology, but this doesn't pose a threat to the United States because they haven't used it yet. Um, I would like to stress that my opponents seem to be waiting for countries to be using these ag offensively against the United States until they think that it's actually a problem. Um, they also talked about how um, uh, the 2,500 people being transferred to the Space Force was A, not a lot of people, but B, also too many people being taken away. So uh, I just want to point out this discrepancy because they, they're arguing that the Space Force is not getting enough personnel to operate well, 
but they're, then they're also arguing that too many personnel are being taken away from other sources. Um, I'd like to just go back to my argument. Um, uh, so, uh, sorry, I'd like to go back to my opponent's argument about ineffectiveness. Uh, they said that because the military branches worked together well before Space Force, the creation of the Space Force will disrupt it, will disrupt the um, workings of the military. But again, as I said in my third subpoint, um, I gave a government accountability study that showed that because space operations were strewn across, again, 60 different organizations across three different branches of the military, um, they were ineffective because there was not one central budget. And the Space Force allows one central budget for space operations, and that will increase their effectiveness. Um, they also talked about how China and Russia have um, military systems where the, their space operations are combined with their air and other milita military operations. I'd like to point out that they have different militaries because they are focused on offensive operations. While the Space Force was created specifically for defensive uh, US operations in space, uh, which includes protecting satellites. And that judge is why I urge a pro ballot. Thank you. We're taking about 30 seconds. Again, my name is Zane Fall, and I'm going to be delivering the summary for Upward Bound. Okay, um, let me get my timer. And this speech is three minutes long. Starting in three, two, one. Good afternoon, judges. I would like to go over some of the points that my opponents have failed to, uh, to to even to remotely fall, like so to speak. They haven't responded to our response about them militarizing space, which creates unnecessary problems and, and only adds to the orbital debris that the Space Force is supposedly so effective in, in maintaining. But, but moving on, they also said that the arrows, the, they talk about the Aerospace Command, the Aerospace Command is the part of the Air Force that the Space Force was previously under. And they say that everything that the Space Force is doing would just be building on top of that, and that the Aerospace Command did not have a centralized budget. But I have right here, according to, according to um, fiscal 2021, the Department of the Aerospace Command requested a 15 not 2021, 20, 2020, the, the, the Space Force, the Air Force required, the Aerospace Command re requested a $14.6 billion from the federal government. They did have, don't let, don't let our opponents feed you these lies, they did have a centralized budget that they did use to build and prosper off of. Our entire point, they, they have failed to respond to our burden to, by proving that there's a necessary need for, for, for the Space Force that our previous system did not cover for. They also admitted that the Space Force is fairly new, so they don't have any data on how exactly we're going to see this effectiveness and how this effectiveness is going to grow. But they did not mention, they did not talk about how they did not, they didn't, 
properly articulate how the Space Force is not going to confuse our military operations. Even in the debate, we got confused on what the Space Force is doing, what the Space Force isn't doing. Because realistically, being a part of a major organization like the, mil the US military, you're required to, to interact with different parts and different parties, and it does get confusing. confusing. Adding another unnecessary um, adding another unnecessary organization will do nothing but harm us. They haven't responded to our quotes, saying that the creating a new, according to Learning Thompson, the relationships supporting these functions have been laboriously worked out over many years. Creating a new military service will inevitably impede and confuse those arrangements, just like you saw today. We also want to go over a few points that they have not talked about. They haven't talked about how disintegrating, they haven't talked about how disintegrating our aerospace unit will set us behind these adversaries, our adversaries. And for that, we strongly urge a negate resolution. We're ready when you are. Um, if it's okay, could we ask the first question? Uh, uh, yeah, you can have the first question. Okay. Oh, this is the final, yeah, this is the grand crossfire, which means both teams, uh, both speakers are able to speak to each other and ask questions. This means that every, even the second speaker from my team and the second speaker from their team, we can talk to each other and ask questions and poke holes in each other's arguments. Uh, you ready? Um, I do need a clear, I need you to clearly articulate to me what exactly is being like, like not like what's being affected, but how do we see that change? You know what I'm saying? That, that, in, that supposed increase in effectivity? Okay, well, um, the Space Force, um, the Space Force is, ma the Space Force's main, uh, main operation is defending U.S. satellites. Um, they're not like carrying out offensive operations against other countries. Therefore, the main sign that the Space Force is effective, like as a military operation, that the Space Force is effective would be the limit um, decreasing attacks like cyber operations or anti-satellite weapons tests from other countries. And are you saying that, that pr our previous system did not do that? Well, well I gave evidence of a, a Chinese cyber attack against the United States satellite. So obviously there was some flaws in our previous but, systems that allowed um, that to happen. That I also that you gave... gave I also gave evidence um, saying that they regularly conducted they regularly conducted space war stimulations to not only be prepared for an attack but an ongoing battle and also implement new implement new what's it called new procedures to protect our oh, satellites. You think the U.S. did. The U.S. Aerospace okay. Command, the U.S. Aerospace Command, separate from the Space Force. I should clarify. Yeah, Thank well, you. the fact that the U.S. Uh, space Command, the Space Command, was attempting to prepare for a poten potential uh, space battle is good, but like the fact that they're preparing themselves does not prove that they're effective. What proves that they're effect they would be what would prove that they were effective is a noticeable reduction in the number of anti-satellite weapons tests didn't but the, the, didn't against the, US satellites. Didn't the Space Force only exist for two years? Are you ex are you expecting continuous satellite like attacks I, back and forth? And you are you that saying that within those two years you've seen a decrease in cyber attacks? I thought you said that was a weak excuse. It is a weak speech. excuse. It it's is a weak, weak excuse. excuse, and you're relying on it by saying that by saying that this 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 organization by the because of the lack of cyber attacks there it, then automatically that means that equals effectiveness, and it doesn't because you've only been around for two years. Also, but, oh. that data that you've given us about that satellite attack that happened before the Space Force was created, which means you've proven our point that the Air Force was able to accurately handle any attacks that happened. Um, they weren't. My data said that that, that um, cyber attack went undetected for years Okay. under I, the previous organizations before the Space Force was created. Could I ask a question? Yes. yes. Um, so you uh, said in your speech we provided an example of 2,500 Air Force personnel being moved to the Space Force. Um, you said that uh, 25, taking 2,500 skilled personnel away from the Air Force to the Space Force is um, hurting, like, 
hurting the Air Force, even though they would be doing the same thing they were doing before. You also said 2,500 was enough. So if can you just I clarify answer, which one is it? If I could answer, I want to clarify that we do have a we do have a what's it called an a card that does say that disintegrating the military aerospace community will likely undermine most its dominance in air, and the Air Force will be diminished by its loss of skill. But what my, when my partner responded to your 2,500 quote, we were saying that that is not solely enough to build this space force. That's not, like, you cannot have a military organization solely made out of 200, 2,500 people, which is what you said. We were saying that that loss to the Air Force will as long that loss to the Air Force will undermine its dominance in the air. That is our clarifica uh, clarification. Thank you. So um, we have 45 seconds of prep time left. We're going to be running the, the rest of it. All right, that's my time. All right, so I'm going to be delivering the pro side's final focus. The goal of the final focus is essentially to make a final pitch to the judges, which in this case would be all of you watching, as to uh, why our side has won and the other side has lost. One tactic many teams will employ is bringing up an impact, which is like an ultimate on ultimate benefit or harm from the debate and explaining why that impact uh, weighs for our side. Um, my time will start now. All right, uh, judges, uh, I believe that our side, the pro, has clearly won this debate. Um, the ultimate impact right now is national security. Uh, through, throughout this debate, the pro side has proven that the creation of a space force will, pro will essentially increase national security. Um, there are two sort of main issues that have weighed throughout this debate. One is efficiency. So in our third subpoint, we explained how the Space Force, by uh, consolidating different uh, military operations under one unit, uh, would, would provide more budget authority for, for the Space Force and thus make it run more efficiency, efficiently. Um, our opponents did not have any way to refute budget authority. They claimed that um, the US Space Command also had a budget. And this is true, but uh, that, is not, that does not refute what we were claiming, which is that the Space Force, in centralizing, the, centralizing its budget, would be able to run more effectively. They also claimed that um, the Space Force would decrease efficiency since it came out of nowhere, but came, the, they did not provide any evidence that it came out of nowhere and did not really explain what that mean, meant. So that argument also falls. The second major weighing issue is, as our opponent stated in their framework, framework, probable need for Space Force. We established various areas throughout our speech in national security where the Space Force would help protect the United States, both against anti-satellite weapons and against cyber operations against our satellites. Um, our, we have provided various times when the US's previous system failed to properly respond to a crisis in these areas. Our opponents did not provide any, count, any effective counters to this. Furthermore, there was no evidence provided throughout the debate showing that these attacks continued to happen under the Space Force's command. Now, our opponents will argue that it has been too recent to really, really see these effects, as they did in the crossfire. But once again, they claimed that it is a weak excuse to say that we, the Space Force hasn't been long, around long enough to see its benefits. We will not see any clear benefits from the Space Force, but we will see harms, and as of now, we haven't, which is why I urge you all to vote a pro ballot. Thank you. Once again, this is the final focus for my team, which means I'm 
As second speaker, I'm affirming why our team won. And I will be start once again, I'm Christopher Sarpong, and I will be starting now. First, judges, I would like to bring up the biggest main points of my argument that still stand. We talk about how the Space Force is not needed. We put this burden on the other team that they haven't addressed at all. They're trying to tell you that we wait on national security versus military effectiveness. But last time I checked, the military is national security. And all of the points we brought up have directly correlated with their argument. Their biggest thing was that the Space Force protects cybersecurity and protects all this other stuff with this. Somehow money equals safety, which it doesn't. They're saying that not only is the Space Force protecting against satellites, but they're also protecting against cybersecurity, which is a gross encompasses of what the Space Force is actually doing. And their whole argument that's saying that we will not see any real change with the Space Force just is them telling you that the Space Force is proving no need. The Air Force was already doing these things. The Air Force was already protecting our satellites, like adding on to what they were saying about how their points about satellite attacks went undetected for years. It did not hurt anybody. It did not hurt. No, they have provided no lives argument. So we are still weighing on winning on military effectiveness because if these branches aren't working together in order to protect ourselves, then nothing is happening. I would also like to bring up their whole point is is continuing on this is not continuing it's falling on this blind of assurance argument all of their evidence has either been about something unrelated to the space force or something about how the space force is not doing anything In these past 2 years the space force has no data of how it helped anything that doesn't make sense because what is the Space Force doing then? They had two years to do nothing, and our opponents brought up nothing, which means that on this point, this burden we put on them about the Space Force not doing its job and not being needed, we went on that point because they've proven nothing that it's doing. Awesome. Great job, Central and Upward Bound. We want to thank you for involving yourselves in the demonstration debate today. Um, we hope that for the folks at home, this served as a great example of what a public forum debate round looks like um, here in the ASAP debate community. Um, yeah, RJ? We also want to thank PSTV for making this possible. Um, this is the first time we've ever recorded uh, a demo debate in this way, um, and uh, we are so happy. So I want to say thank you again, uh, Alexandra, Miller, uh, Zane, Christopher. Thank you so much. Um, for uh, members of our league who are watching, we want to make some quick announcements uh, at the end. Um, we, like we mentioned, we're starting the league very soon in a few weeks. Um, there are lots of sort of uh, pre-enrollment forms that we're asking all coaches to fill out. So look for those in the in the newsletter, especially the student surveys um, and the consent and enrollment forms for student participation this year. Um, thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, we hope to uh, see you all soon at uh, future ASAP events. And, uh, yeah, everybody, thank you again. Bye, everybody.